Today we're making some whimsical woodland decor crafts. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Today we're going to make a fairy swing first. You get to meet the new fairy. As promised, I have a fairy here to make over for you. She is on a swing. I love this. This little thing came from Dollar Tree. And she's just attached to her little seat there with just these little pieces of, of jute. Gonna need some type of uh, greenery mat or some moss. A dome. You don't have to have a pedestal, but some type of a cloche would work. I'm going to paint this black one a different color because we're going to have her sitting up here. Make sure that whatever you're going to be using is tall enough to hold in that tree. So I'm going to use this green and the stone on here. I'll spray it with green first, let it dry with one coat, and then I'll do two coats of that brown. Okay, so I'm just going to need to cut this out a little bit smaller than the diameter of the opening of that cloche because we want to be able to set it down in there. You can easily take these off by just a little gentle pull and they'll come right out. There are two little spots there with glue in them where they were glued down. So we'll use that same spot and we will uh, put the ropes back in those when we get finished making her over. So she's cute, but get a good look at her right now and see her wings are not symmetrical and she's kind of sloppily painted, but that's okay. You know, for $1.25, I can't really complain. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue back to the tips so that they will be nice and pointy and easy to put back down into her little seat. You can see the green spray paint on my hands. Okay, so we're going to make her over, and I'm going to use a bunch of little brushes to do this. I'm going to use this light gray for her wings, and this little glitter to go on her wings. I'll use some sunflower yellow, one of my favorite yellows, y'all know. That's what her top will be. I want to deepen up that purple skirt with this Concord purple. And then she's going to be a pale princess like me. So we're going to use a light skin tone color for her. But you can paint yours any color you like. I'm just going to use my little cutters here to just make sure that I can get those wings more symmetrical. I'm just looking at them from the back and kind of uh, clipping at them. They're just resin. They'll cut without shattering. And then use my nail file to go over the rough spots so that we don't have too much thickness. You know, kind of narrow it down. And then I'll wipe it off and start adding the paint. You're not, I won't bore you with watching me paint the whole thing, but just look how careful you need to be when you are painting um, if you're going to do a little makeover. You just got to be really careful with a small brush. Take your time and go over all the little spots. I'm just starting off with her wings. They they're, uh, take up a lot of room, so I thought I would just start with those first. Might be the easiest thing to paint making sure I get close to her body because some of that paint has um, from her clothing is on her wings and I just want to clean that up make it look a little more crisp and this really does do the trick for it I think so you're gonna do the back to both wings do the back make sure that um, this is kind of textured so I'm just making sure that I get in all the little grooves and the little circles and dots that are on her wings any place that was this uh, dirty white color, I'm just going to go over and do the sides to do underneath, you know, the whole point of making it over is to make it better. I'm going to use some antiquing wax, just a little stencil brush, and add some paint, I mean add some of that wax and kind of offload it. And then I'm going to just add it to the tree just because I prefer a darker color. So I'm just going to deepen it up and every part of this trunk is going to get a coat of this. You don't have to do this, or you can use paint if you don't have antiquing wax. You can certainly do that. You can use a furniture repair marker if you want to do that, you know, if you do like to add some color. And I went over every piece, so all the little stumps and underneath where the flowers sit. So here's our little girl. Once she is painted and her paint is dry, 
Still gotta do some work though. Let's put some magic in her wings. So I'm gonna use this Mod Podge. And it's just a glossy Mod Podge. You can use whatever you have, but I thought since I'm using glitter, this might help keep it nice and sparkly. So I'm gonna carefully go over her wings here, but I'm not gonna get it anywhere except on the wings because I want all the magic to be right there. I don't wanna completely dust her with uh, glitter, you know, and keep it in her hair and all that. I want it to all be, well, I can't say realistic um, necessarily, but in my mind, I have a certain look I'm going for. But if you like your little fairy to be completely covered in pixie dust, then you can certainly do that. So, while the Mod Podge is still wet, I'm just going to dump this glitter on her. You can use whatever type of glitter that you like. And after I get the front and the back of her wings done, this is how she'll look. I'm going to take a thin paintbrush and go inside each center of those flowers. And then I'm going to start adding and dumping off just like I did with her wings. This is the look that I'm going to get, and I think this is much better for a woodland look. And I'm going to add some glue. Now, I need to work quickly here because it's a big surface area and hot glue will dry fast. So I'm just pushing that glue stick in there as I am directing the glue down, and it pours out faster that way. Probably not really good for the glue gun, but it was good for the project. I'm going to mash it around all the way around and then if there's any area there that is hanging over I'm just going to take my scissors and clip that away. Now I got this moss mat uh, at Goodwill. I've looked these up on Amazon and they're like $14. So I was very blessed to find what I found. Okay so just to have her a place to stay while she dried I just put a little hot glue on this little piece of wood just to make sure she wouldn't fall over. And I'm gonna pull her off of there. She made a clean break, came right off. And you can spray um, the tree and her if you want to with a little bit of a clear sealer to keep the glitter in place if you would like. I certainly did do that. Okay, I like the look of this. I think the tree was really painted just fine. And I don't mind the pink and white on top. I think it looks really pretty like little cherry blossoms. So we need to put her back on her swing, right? So I'm just going to, I'm not going to burn this because I'll have wax and all kinds of stuff on it. So we're not going to do that. But I'm just going to trim off a couple of the little strands, little flyaways that were making a mess. And you see here on the side, you can see where the holes are. I'm going to add a little bit of my hot glue right down in there. Do the same thing here. I found it was a little bit easier just laying it down. And then put, because we put the glue on there, it'll push right back down into that little that little bowl, I guess you could call it. I'm going to put on my spectacles and work on putting that right into her hand. She's got to hold on to her swing, right? That's what we do. We don't just sit in there. So we're going to put just a little tiny dot. This would be... These little miniatures like this probably be best to have like a one of those glue guns that it's a like a fine tip or a fine detail maybe um, glue gun. I don't have one of those, but my glue gun works just fine for this. And then she's back in action. Look at that. And even when I rock it hard, she's still pretty safe there. And this is how it's going to look before we put them in their new little playground. We're going to put her in her garden. So we're going to make a little garden up here for her. And y'all, later on, we're going to make her house. So stay tuned for the second one, too. I'm going to put this back down. You can see it sets down in the little cracks where the moss is. Everything fits great. Still got some clearance. I'm going to add a mess of hot glue here and press it down. And I'm going to press it down and hold it in place for quite a while. I just cut that out so you don't have to be bored with all that. But now that she's glued in place, we're going to start dressing up the inside. Keep in mind, you want to keep your florals and whatever you put in here to the inside. And you want to make sure that they are not higher or not much higher than the top of that little tree. Because if it is, it's going to bend when you put the cloche back on top. 
So I just love these little, I think they're like little snapdragons, but you got to hold them in place. You see the one fell over there in the top corner? I'm going to pick that back up because the glue is still, is still, um, you know, hadn't cooled off yet. So I'm just going to hold the two in place, both of them. I recently got these on a garland from Goodwill, and I will be doing a haul for y'all. So just, you know, I haven't forgotten. I will be getting y'all haul out. And I pulled these off because the fern is just so delicate and beautiful. And it's not like the other fern that I have. So now I've got a little variety I can mix up in there. It's just angelic looking to me, like a dragonfly wing. I hope that y'all are enjoying these little whimsical creations that we're making this summer. I am a fair skin girl. I stay inside, or at least in the shade, a lot in the summertime because I am... Uh, fair skin and I blister and also because I am in menopause full-blown menopause ladies holla if you hear me because this is a pain in the rump but you know it is what it is so I'm just going to use my imagination this summer and spend a little time indoors being playful so some of these projects that you see me put out are not the typical thing that you find on my channel from the beginning but you know, if you're here for something that's a little more realistic, a little more rustic, it's coming. I promise you it's coming. I just wanted to do a little bit of this first. So I'm just adding in leaves and pieces of wood here and there. Now those pieces of wood came from the Dollar Tree in a little mesh bag, and it's where the sand and the shells are. If you don't have something like this, get you some good cutters go out in the yard go into a public park pick a branch up off the ground i mean don't let's not let's not prune anybody's bushes back here but if it's on the ground you know cut your stick up into little pieces and uh use those you can also when you have these little fern picks you can trim them up get them exactly the right size that you like them so that's what i'm doing here and I love that this little fern, uh, it comes in like a darker green and a lighter green. No worries if y'all don't have this on hand already. You can typically get some type of a fern or some greenery at Dollar Tree. And in the next project, I will be using some greenery from the Dollar Tree. So you'll be able to see the options that you can get from there too. This is kind of like her playground, her park, her little secluded place that she likes to go and just relax and unwind after doing her fairy business all day. So I've got this exactly like if I was a little girl, how I would love to have my swing. So these little mushrooms came from Timu. I am not sponsored by Timu, but I bought some of these because they're so tiny that for these little bitty projects, I thought, you know, they would definitely have a place in my crafting supply. I like to put different sizes together just for a little more interest. You can definitely get little mushrooms from the Dollar Tree, um, from Dollar General is what I'm being told, and you can definitely get them from craft supply stores. Try, if you're going to go to a craft supply store, to get things on sale or with coupons. Or maybe even at holidays, if someone asks you what you want for a gift, you could tell them that you would like a gift card. And you can use a gift card to go get your stuff. So this is how it looks so far. I know that when I am making it from the top down, you can't always see what's going on. So I will show you all the way through what I am doing. I love that the purple and the yellow match her clothing. It's so cute. When you have glue webs, you can just use a blow dryer if you wanted to. And just, you know, kind of go over it gently and just, it'll melt those right down. So now let's work on the cloche. I'm going to use a little bit of this green moss from Dollar Tree. I'm going to put it right around the little center on the top. Now this did come from, uh, this cloche came from Dirt Cheap. I forgot to tell y'all. But you can get any cloche that you want anywhere that you can find them. I'm going to add that down in the middle, and that's going to make a little topper. The next project is a mushroom home. Let's see where she lives. All right, so we could pretend she's on a secluded island. Here is her little home. This came from Dollar Tree, and y'all, I was very impressed. There's a little bit of spray over on the larger part of the mushroom here, but otherwise, I'm not going to change anything. 
This is another piece of that wood that I found in the yard. We're going to use this. I got this at the thrift store and I knew that I could use this wooden piece over again. Now the bird's beautiful, but I don't like that it's turned yellow. Moss mat or moss, some more greenery of your choice. And then little sticks and pieces of wood from your yard or from Dollar Tree. First, I've got to get the, I could either use the back side or the front. If you're going to use something that's glazed over like this or has some type of a covering on it, sand it first, wipe it down, and then dry it off. I'm also going to be using Gorilla Glue Sticks to make this project stick together. So I have remnants left of this piece of mat because I've been using it a lot in these projects, these whimsical projects. And I'm just going to trim it down into pieces that will work on this. Now what I love about this and the other moss mats that I have found is that once you get them in place you can just take your fingers and run over the little gap and you won't even see that it was pieced together. So you know you just kind of like brush it with your fingers like if you were scratching your dog's back with just the tips of your fingers without your nails. You know you got to do that little motion and it kind of makes the fibers go together so you can't even tell. Because you're going to see, see the gaps here and there I'm going to piece those together with little bits and pieces also. All those little pieces lay in there, I'll be using those to fill in those gaps and you won't even know. Look at that. You can't even tell. And then right now what I'm doing is just getting off any stray glue, you know, that's on there. I don't like that, so I'm making sure that's right. Then I'm going to find the placement for her home. I love the sizing and that this little piece of wood looks like it was made for this mushroom. Look at the fit. That's perfect. This, this video was meant to be made. She was meant to live here. So I started taking off this tag and then I thought, why? It's just going to be stuck down. Nobody's going to see it. So I'm just going to leave it and add a good bit of glue like we did on the other one and then press it down into the fibers. I'm going to hold it there until I feel like it's been there long enough. It's not moving around when I shake it. Then I'm going to fit this where I want it grab my glue gun and while it's sitting there I'm going to work on so you can see how it fits so great right there we're not going to be covering this so placement doesn't really matter I just generally like to put the back of my projects toward the back so that I have more space in the front you know to play with And then I'll just go in with my glue gun. I'll make sure that there's glue that is between my mushrooms and the wood. That'll make it a little more stable. And then the pieces of the wood that is touching the bottom, I'm going to add glue there to make sure that that stays nice and stable. I don't want anything to fall over because this little beauty I'm going to keep for some time. Love it. Just put it where you need it. I'm trying to be careful with the glue. I don't want a bunch of glue spilling out. I don't want it to look sloppy. I want it to look neat and I don't want you to be able to see it. So I'm trying to be precise where I apply my glue. Okay. Now you can see here, I'm moving my hand so you can see that it is all down on that piece. Love the look of this so far. So cute, just like this, I think. All these little nooks and crannies were just made for some moss to live and some little plants to grow, right? So I'm taking some scraps of that mat and just pressing it down into a little hot glue. You can see here how that works. You could put a tiny bird nest there. You could add more mushrooms. I'm going to play around with this fern and add some more in here. And I'm just going to make a bunch because I personally don't really see once, like in the summer, when ferns are growing, they're usually in clusters. Now in the beginning, you might see one little frond by itself. But for the most part, frond, is that the word? Piece of fern, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of a palm frond, yeah. But um, yeah, you, you'll see them in little clusters. So I'm just gonna make them sort of like in a little cluster here. Because this is a summer project, right? Well, it could potentially be a summer project. I'm not gonna use any flowers in here, y'all, none. This is all gonna be greenery and kind of natural looking. So look at these. This came from Dollar Tree. It sure did. And there are caladiums in here and all kinds of stuff that I can't even name. 
but their own wire, which makes the quality of them fantastic if you're going to be using these, because I don't want them to be flat. You can bend these out and you can arrange them a little bit so they look like they do when they grow. And they grow out from the center and fall to the side. That's how they look. Well, the heads of the flowers fall to the side. They stand up. So I'm going to use a little bit of my floral wire here to twist them together. And then I'm going to trim off because I want this to be flat. When it's flat, it makes it easier and you have a little more surface area to put your glue so that um, it will stand up a little bit better. That's just my experience. So you see that they're wired and you can just bend them and look how much nicer that looks. Looks more realistic. I'm going to grab some of my floral tape. Y'all, when you use floral tape, I know a lot of people do not know. When you start twisting it, put some tension on it. You can see how I'm putting tension on the tape. When you pull it, it releases the wax, which makes it sticky, and it makes it stick to itself. Continue to put pressure and twist this, okay? Put as much on there as you like, and you can just tear it off when you get to the end. Now, I've had some glue right down in that crack. So I'm just going to place this down right on top. Now, it could be to the side. It could be behind, wherever you want to do it. But I'm going to add a little more glue here to kind of make it stand up. I grabbed a piece of greenery from my little greenery bucket or basket where I have a bunch of scraps. And I thought this would be something a little bit different. We'll put some fur in there, a cedar or fir, whichever tree this is. And I'm going to add that. And then the little pieces, I'll just put here and there across the top, just to fill in a bit. And add some to the back, you know. I like to do my projects where you've got a little something surprising going on in the back. Even though there's not, a much, not much room, you wouldn't think there would be, but I still like to do it because it's always surprising to turn it around and find those little hidden areas. So this is it so far. Got to keep y'all informed, keep showing you. This came out of another pack from Dollar Tree. It's a little mailbox, and I thought this would be really cute, but I'm instead of putting it close to the house, I'm going to put it right underneath a little depression in that wood in a little nook. I'm going to add some more greenery over here. This is so pretty, and Dollar Tree, y'all. Okay, now this I thrifted recently. These are little bits of cork. And they look like little rocks or little pieces of gravel, but they're really lightweight. Let's give her a walkway. I'm going to go right in front of the house, the same width as the little stone that's there on the bottom. And hey, y'all, use whatever little house that you like. If you want to use something different, a little cabin or whatever they have at Dollar Tree, you can just use that. I'm going to add some hot glue, or it might be easier if you're using your fingers to put that on a cool temp and just pack that down and press it into that mat underneath and into the glue. I'm gonna extend it all the way to the edge of this little plaque or her little island, all the way to the edge. Maybe this is her tropical getaway. I don't know, but I'll tell you what, I would live here for sure. I love to be surrounded by green and woods and mushrooms and goodness love it and then I'm gonna make it almost like it rolls down or bevels down on the edge and then we're gonna make her some little steps even though she flies sometimes she walks I'm gonna take a few pieces of that wood and I'm just gonna do like small medium and large so that the smallest step is on top it's gonna fit right there underneath that I'm gonna go ahead and glue the bottom and the second step on there and then I will choose and place the top step. It doesn't take long for this part to dry. It's going to take a little while for the cork to dry, so just be patient with that. But it is all covered, and it will stick down. I tried to shake off the excess, and nothing moved. It all stayed right there. How cute is that? Yes. You can use gravel or you can use anything that you have if you want to make a little a little walkway. You can even use those tiny little bits that you get out of like um, a fish aquarium. You know how they have the little colorful stones or little rocks? That would be really cute. 
I guess they call it gravel. I'm not sure. But that would be really cute for like a, a really magical fairy look. I always have these garden fairies and the, the ones that are woodland fairies, you know? But you do whatever you like best. Then I added some of that cork around the bottom of the mailbox just because I liked it. See, we got some stuff going on in the back and the front. I love it. I'm going to add some more moss in the other little areas. I always like to take a good look at the whole project up close, far away, back front, side to side, and just let my imagination run wild. I just add stuff where I want to, and you know, you don't have to do this much if you don't want to do this much, but it just makes my heart so happy. I, I feel like a kid doing this, and y'all, I just turned 50. On the 31st of March, I turned 50, and I don't, I, it doesn't bother me one bit. You know, it doesn't. I feel good for 50. I do. Look at that. That's cute so far, right? So we're going to place another little piece of wood over here because maybe she needs a bench where she can come out and contemplate before she takes a little, a little fly over to her playground so she can sit in her swing. And then, of course, if there's a tree stomp down, we got to have something living by it, right? Let's just add a little more right there. Look at her house, y'all. Wouldn't you like to live in a house like this? She's a good keep housekeeper, and she's a good little gardener too, isn't she? But she works so hard, she has to have a rest, so that she has her little garden where she can go sit in her swing and think about her hard day's work. These projects bring me so much joy, and I hope they do you too. Here are the two projects. Excuse my photography lights above the dome. I will take that off for you in just a minute so you can see what it looks like. Isn't that cute? Y'all, I did all of this on a budget, but it doesn't look like I did this on a budget, does it? By thrifting and using Dollar Tree items and maybe some things that other people don't want anymore, you can really make some unique works of art. You're not doing the same thing as everybody else and it makes it unique. You know, age is just a state of mind. It really is. We still have a bit of that playfulness inside of us. We just have to be brave enough to just let it come out. Don't let people tell you that you're silly for doing this kind of stuff. No, indeed. If this brings you joy, you do it. And these projects are so fun to me. Look at her. Look at her swinging. She's so cute. Y'all can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. I hope that you subscribe and like the channel and share this video if you know someone who might enjoy it as well. As always, thank you for stopping by, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.